everybody, it's Stuart A. Swordlow and Janet Diane Moria Swordlow for the Expansions News Podcast for middle of April 2016. And uh, it's been a very interesting week and uh, I'm sure that you've all heard about the earthquakes that hit Japan. But uh, what we also need to remember is that prior to the earthquakes in Japan, there were large earthquakes also in Tonga, in Taiwan, and the Philippines, and uh, they also are expecting huge quakes to hit the western United States, the Philippines, Hawaii, and even India. Now, the first earthquake that uh, hit Japan, they now consider to be a foreshock or a precursor to the one that hit the next day. The first one, depending on which new service, was anywhere from 6.2 to 6.5, and the second one the following day was anywhere from 7 to 7.3, again, depending on which new service you listen to. Uh, of course, uh, that was followed the day after that by a 7.8 earthquake in Ecuador. And the whole Pacific Rim is really crunching and uh, probably will not stop. As I mentioned just before, there are some seismologists who really feel that this is uh, the beginning of a major active period in the Pacific Basin. And so everybody who is located in the Western United States, which has been relatively quiet in the last few years uh, for large quakes, I think that you need to uh, take stock in all of that. Uh, on uh, refugee news, uh, Pope Francis uh, took 12 refugees from Syria, uh, all of the Muslim, back to the Vatican with him after a very controversial trip to Greece. The Pope visited a refugee detention center on the Greek island of Lesbos, and he said he went there, quote, make a gesture of welcome to the refugees, unquote, but a gesture of welcome to who? Europe does not want them. And he went to a camp called the Moria Camp and told them that they were not alone. Well, they really are alone because no one's helping them either. The Vatican said they would take responsibility for supporting the families, which to them, the Vatican, that's uh, their lunch money. The, uh, the Pope said that he's already hosting two refugee families at the Vatican so that the gesture would be in keeping with Francis's call for Europe to open its hearts and borders to those most in need. Now, of course, the Vatican has literally hundreds and hundreds of rooms that are not being used, and he only took in two families. So it's, it's a very minor gesture on his part. I'd like to see the families. Maybe he's just lying. Well, I haven't seen any pictures of them at the Vatican either. Um, and what, and what do they do at the Vatican? It's not like they're going to get a job there or, uh, you know, have a home. Maybe they're the militant leaders who are living there. It could very well be, or it's just for show. Now, the Pope uh, went, told the head of the Church of Greece to thank them for its welcome and highlight for the plight of the refugees following the controversial EU deal to send them back to Turkey. Well... Greece doesn't want them. I don't know why a Catholic Pope is going to a Greek Orthodox country to thank them for taking in refugees that nobody wants or can afford. The Greeks can't afford to feed themselves, let alone these thousands of refugees. Now, um, the Pope said, we hope that the world will heed these scenes of tragic and indeed desperate need and respond in a way worthy of our common humanity. May all our brothers and sisters on this continent, meaning Europe, like the Good Samaritan, come to your aid in the spirit of fraternity, solidarity, and respect for human dignity that has distinguished this long history. Now he's talking about Europe. This is the same continent uh, that uh, had World War I, World War II, uh, uh, Bosnia War, Napoleon, and on and on, communism. Uh, no, uh, there was not... Uh, this fraternity and solidarity that the Pope is talking about. Of course, he comes from South America, where, by the way, he helped the Argentinian junta to arrest people and execute them. Then, Francis met with Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras and thanked him for the generosity shown by the Greek people in welcoming these foreigners, despite their economic troubles. Well, what choice did they have? These people just washed up on their shore. 
Well, it's all staged for public consumption. Um, if Europe and the Pope really want to help these people, then remove ISIS from Asia and Middle East and let these people go back to their real homes. They don't belong in Europe. Now, let's go quickly to the Caribbean, where Jamaican Governor General Patrick Allen proposed that uh, to replace Her Majesty the Queen with a non-executive president as the head of state, because she is the queen of the Commonwealth nations and Jamaica is a Commonwealth nation. But the irony of what he stated is that the queen appointed him, uh, just like she has appointed all Jamaican governor generals. And in fact, the King's House official website says that Her Majesty's representative in Jamaica uh, is this person. But now we can get to the real reason he wants the removal of the queen as head of state, because he also wants to give legalization for marijuana to be used for specific purposes, which the queen does not approve of. And uh, in Jamaica, marijuana is called ganja, and the use of ganja by persons of the Rastafarian faith uh, to be used for medical, therapeutic, and scientific purposes. Scientific purposes, I'm not so sure what that's going to be used for. So, Haman and Irie and all of that is just a ploy to change the law for the use of, uh, of, of, of marijuana. Now, another story about the Pope uh, came up this week, and that was that he met with Bernie Sanders, um, and uh, people were very critical of that because they felt it might influence the uh, U.S. presidential race. He claims that it was an accidental meeting. Well, I'll tell you why it wasn't accidental in a minute. But the Pope said that anyone who uh, feels that this was uh, an influence uh, recommends that they find a psychiatrist. That's a little harsh words from the little Pope there, isn't it? He called that this is good manners and not getting involved in politics. Well, when you meet with a politician, someone who's running for political office in another country, yeah, that's getting involved in politics. That's not good manners. Then why don't you meet with all of them? Well, Sanders, the self-described democratic socialist, well, let's put it this way, he's a communist, uh, whose populist message continues to resonate with the voters, uh, said this. This is from Sanders. He said, he thanks the Pope for enlightening the world about the massive levels of income and wealth inequality, about a culture which rewards greed and ignores people who are hurting, and, and, and also about climate change. Well, Colonel Sanders, you've just gone down a few notches in my book because the Pope is not about that. The Pope is about greed, and the Vatican is the largest landholder in the world, and the Vatican alone could solve all of the world's hunger issues and poverty issues in one day if they gave up some of what they owned. Okay? So, Colonel Sanders, now I see who you really are. Uh, now, Sanders' wife, Jane, is Catholic which is unusual since uh, he is Jewish. And why wasn't it accidental? Because they stayed overnight at the Pope's residence. And it was on the same, flo uh, same, same floor as the Pope lives on. That's not an accidental meeting, okay? But uh, they said that, now this is the interesting part, but P Pope Francis has been known to flout Vatican protocol and the meeting with Sanders was evidence that his personal desires often trump Vatican diplomacy. I thought that's an interesting choice of words, to trump Vatican diplomacy. They said the meeting lasted about five minutes. Well, then why bother? Why you fly all the way to Rome for a five-minute meeting? But Sanders really was there uh, to put uh, a speech, to give a speech alongside priests, bishops, academics, and two South American presidents at a Vatican conference, and the one South American president Sanders met with was anti-American Evo Morales, who was the president of Bolivia and uh, also leans towards socialism and communism. So there's very interesting connections going on there. Um, and uh, the chancellor for the Pontifical Academy, Bishop Marcelo Sanchez Sarando, said that he invited Sanders because he's the only U.S. presidential candidate 
who show deep interest in the teachings of Francis. So in other words, he's going to have a control of the Vatican over him. Very, very sad situation in the U.S. I just lost total respect for Mr. Sanders. Now, on to Germany, uh, where there's a new video out that shows a multi-ethnic crowd of disabled, gay, and transgender people, as well as Muslim women wearing a face veil and a man wearing a Saudi headgear, all telling a crowd of Germans that they are not Germany. The crowd of angry-looking white Germans uh, then hits against the windows of a bus to frighten Arab children. Uh, and the Germans uh, have a Donald Trump placard that says, Refugees Not Welcome. So um, there is the person who made this video, Jan Bommermann, who said that he's condemning the German crowd as authoritarian nationalist dorks and telling them, you are not the people, you are the past, and that true Germans are coming for you, you'd better run fast. In other words, the original Germans are no longer considered Germans, but all these other people who've entered the country, those are the real Germans, and they should throw out the real Germans. Now, it's interesting that the pork is being quietly removed from the menus of uh, German restaurants, really, and that the, this Bomberman declares that true Germans eat vegan sausages. Uh, no, I don't think so. I find it interesting that wherever Muslims go in Europe and North America or wherever, everyone has to give up their belief system for them. But if I were to go to a Muslim country and eat pork, I would have my head chopped off. So there has to be two-way respect, not just one way. And I have nothing against Muslims, but we cannot give up our rules, our culture, our life to accommodate them for moving here or anywhere. That's just wrong. No, they don't do it for us. Now, there's a young girl in the film who declares that because it's 2016, it's perfectly legal for migrants to do whatever the effing they want to do because they are effing human beings just like you and everyone else. Brilliant little girl. And this Bomberman announces that Germany is open, multicultural, and tolerant, and that his crowd then moves forward under a giant European Union flag, shouting and hurling objects towards the white Germans who flee as they're hit with food and books. Ah, oh, well, that's tolerant. It's reverse discrimination. What's happening to Germany? You should all be ashamed of yourselves, honestly. And he says that German values, which includes, in quote, never forget, referring to the Holocaust uh, and diversity, also declares freedom of speech to be a German value, despite the government's policy of working with social media websites, such as Facebook, to censor criticism of migrants' behavior, and the obvious irony that the message and the video appears to be that critics of multiculturalism must be shut down. And to add on top of all of that, Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, has allowed the German courts to prosecute a German comedian who criticized Turkish dictator Aragon. Unbelievable. Really sad for Germany. Now, let's move on to Panama and Russia. You've all by now heard of the Panama Papers, uh, which reveal financial data from a Panamanian legal firm that suggests up to $2 billion in offshore banks could be linked to Vladimir Putin and other people. Uh, many heads of state are in are in hot water because of this. And the Russian president himself uh, has taken aim at this, saying it's part of a US plot to destabilize Russia. But there's a new theory out uh, that says that Moscow actually is the one who created the situation and that the Russians are behind the link, the leak. And there is a, um, an economist named Clifford Gaddy, who works with the Brookings Institute, who claims that uh, it was a, a Russian plot. He says that it was a hacker backed by the Russian government to email the German newspaper Zu Deutsche Zeitung uh, to give the leak early in 2015, and that deliberately little information about the, with the Panama Papers harms Putin at all, and even very few Americans have been linked to the Panama Papers, 
uh, which could mean that it's being held back for blackmail purposes later on. And so he says the question is we should uh, not just ask what's in the papers, but what is not in the papers. And he sees these financial secrets creating a huge problem for world leaders, and he has to wonder if it was a Putin trick. So now I leave up to you. Okay. So going to on to Russia, you may have heard about the two Russian warplanes that flew simulated attack passes near a U.S. guided missile destroyer in the Baltic Sea last week. Apparently, one official describes them as one of the most aggressive interactions in recent memory. Now, you want to remember that this is close to Russia, not close to the U.S. Mm. The repeated flights by the warplanes also flew new, near the ship a day earlier, were so close that they created a wake in the water with 11 passes, even though the plane carried no visible weaponry. And apparently a Russian helicopter also made seven passes around the USS Donald Cook. Now, I don't know if the word Donald has anything to do with Trump or not, but that's uh, something to be considered. It says, according to an anonymous U.S. ship official, that, quote, the ship tried to raise them on the radio, but they did not answer, unquote. Apparently, it says the incident came as NATO plans its biggest buildup in Eastern Europe since the Cold War. Apparently, they're countering what the alliance says, in particular the three Baltic states and Poland considered to be a more aggressive Russia. According to Poland's defense minister, who told private radio RMF, quote, we cannot treat this as anything else than provocation, yet another example of aggressive intentions toward NATO. Apparently, the USS Donald Cook had just wrapped up a port visit in the Polish city of Gdynia, on April 11th and then proceeded out to sea with a Polish helicopter on board. So Poland continues to figure prominently in a variety of international incidents. It says, um, according to U.S. Representative Randy, J. Randy Forbes, who chairs the House Armed Services Subcommittee on Sea Power, he says, quote, these actions have the potential to unnecessarily escalate tensions between countries and could result in a miscalculation or accident that could cause serious injury or death. So, let's see what happens with that. Well, I just want to make a little comment on that, and that is, this happened in the Baltic Sea. That is like if Russia had aircraft carriers and submarines in the Gulf of Mexico that were steaming around, what would the U.S. do? Just let them say, you know, hi, have a nice time on the water? They would also buzz them. All right, so it's not really what people are telling you that it is, or at least in the news. And I found this was interesting because it's talking about soldiers throughout history using drugs before going into battle, speaking of the military. There is a book out by, again, a Polish author, Luke, uh, Łukasz Kaminski, who wrote Shooting Up a History of Drugs and Warfare. And he says that Scandinavian Vikings were able to achieve a trance-like state during battle by eating psychedelic mushrooms. Mm. Inca warriors were fueled by coca leaves, and American soldiers in the Vietnam War often used heroin, with 10 to 15 percent ending up addict to it, addicted to it by the time they returned home. Now here he's indicating that it was provided to the U.S. soldiers. He claims that humans don't really like to kill other humans, so therefore in order for them to do it, they have to have something to help them cross that line, which is the consuming of drugs. He said, an altered state of mind is helpful when you must take another human's life. He claims that in World War II, Nazi soldiers would often take met metamphetamines before going into battle, and the most had taken pervitin, I don't know that one, but it's a version of crystal meth, before the invasion again of Poland in 1939. He also claims that the British, the Americans, and the Japanese also fought heavily on speed or meth, he says. And then, soldiers coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq say that things like Adderall and energy drinks were available to them to keep their energy up. And one of the uh, people who commented on this post claimed that he saw the heavy use of speed and metamphetamines by the U.S. pilots during the Gulf Wars. And he claims that this was supplied by the U.S. military, which was used to increase the amount of sorties of pilots and to increase their reflexes and situational awareness. So find all of that interesting considering what's happening now with the legalization of, for now, marijuana, which I have been telling you that will increase to other more hardcore drugs. 
and in the meantime, crewless drone ships will be sailing the seas by 2020, according to Rolls-Royce. They claim that, quote, this is happening. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. We will see a remote-controlled ship in commercial use by the end of the decade. He claims that there will be virtual captains and crews who will monitor the vessels from land, which means they can lead normal home lives. And it is predicted that crews stationed around the world will be ready to be transferred by helicopter to the, these drone ships who might encounter, which might encounter problems or run into trouble that they cannot handle themselves. And speaking of drones, Australia Post is going to begin to use drones to deliver small packages. Apparently it will not be for the outlying areas, but more likely to uh, the cities, because right now they, the drones cannot travel very far. And Amazon's prototypes last year, they say, can only deliver a package 15 miles. So we have to watch Australia to see what happens with their drones. And in Japan, there will be invisible trains coming there by 2015. Apparently, these trains are made from hyper-reflective materials, allowing it to seamlessly blend into both urban and rural landscapes. So, invisibility, which we've talked to you about before, continues to be a buzzword. And in Mississippi, they're back in the news again. I told you about them last week. Now, here we are again because the governor signed a bill to allow guns in church without a permit. Apparently, without a permit, without a permit this is called the Church Protection Act which allows specific individuals to provide armed security to protect places of worship if they attend firearms training sessions. And of course, places of worship can be defined in many ways as we know these days, so keep that in mind as well. There is a robot going to school in Japan for the first time. Apparently these are called pepper robots, and it is a humanoid robot that uses cameras and sensors to detect human emotions. Apparently, Pepper is expected to help students who struggle to communicate in class. And apparently, there were 10 Pepper robots who were used to staff a phone shop in Tokyo. It apparently is intended eventually for use in customer service jobs in banks and shops for greeting people and could eventually become a companion in people's homes. It's about 4 feet tall, weighs 62 pounds, it can react to human emotions by offering comfort or laughing if told a joke, and apparently this robot has the ability to learn. So apparently in five years they're saying, or less, that all office jobs will completely disappear and machines will replace humans. Maybe there'll be uh, robots doing this podcast in the near future. That's possible. And of course, as you know, April is the birth month of Hitler. Well, of course we have Hitler stories coming up. There is a mother in Wales to twins who wanted to name her daughter Cyanide because Cyanide is what killed Hitler so she said it was a lovely pretty name for her girl which can be positively associated with the deaths of Hitler and Goebbels. Sounds like a brilliant child. It's a brilliant mother. Yeah. Apparently she said that Cyanide is a name related to flowers and plants and she considers that a good thing. Mm -hmm. And her son Preacher she argues that that is a rather cool name with a strong spiritual message which could stand her son well for the future and the uh, justices hearing their case struck it down. Yeah, good. So both of the twins who are currently in foster care will have names chosen uh, for them by their elder half-siblings. And then in Florida, a zookeeper known as the Tiger Whisperer was mauled to death by a tiger that she was training. So I often tell you that these wild animals that are out there that people go up close to and pet and even dogs, all kinds of animals are killing their trainers, their hosts, the people who are supposedly taking care of them. So these animals are not little people, they are animals and they need to be treated as animals and unfortunately this woman was the result of um, being Did it say why it did that? No, just said that apparently the they had to tranquilize the tiger and had to wait for the drugs to wear off before they could reach her even. And then time travel, as we know, that's always in the news. And here we go. We have a 1,500-year-old mummy who was found in Mongolia. This one says Mongolia, but I also had another one. It was reported in the Siberian Times. So I thought it was originally found in the Altai Mountains, but here we're saying Mongolia. Anyway, conspiracy theorists are saying that this 1,500-year-old mummy was wearing Adidas trainers. 
And of course they're putting these shoes all over the internet now and claiming that this is a time traveler. So I saw them, I don't think it's a time traveler, but they are putting the idea of time travel out to the public continually. There was a watch not too long ago, if you remember, that they were claiming mm -hmm. was uh, from another time they period. They never did explain that. No, they? they don't. They just put it out there because they're imprinting the public. And then, listen to this, there was a man who was trying to travel through time who smashed through his car through two Florida businesses. An advanced tax services, and the other was called, of course, Pensacola Caskets. Well, you'd have to go too far then. Apparently not. He was still was, oh, he was physically okay. He was arrested, and it was on a Sunday. No one was in their offices, so no one other than this gentleman was hurt. And then in uh, Arizona, this was interesting, there was a 71-year-old man who was stung by bees and declared dead. Now, he did come back to life in the ambulance. But what was interesting to me was uh, this article was talked about this details of shocking resurrection. And remember, we keep telling you they're putting out these buzz terms for you. Uh -huh. But when I went to the article, the, the word resurrection did not appear. It was only in the title. So therefore, they wanted people to be exposed to that word. And again, watch for the use of resurrection. Was that near Phoenix? Maricopa. Maricopa County. That's yes. Uh, yeah, so that's Phoenix area. So Phoenix means rising from the ashes. Yeah. And speaking of ashes, there is now a new way for widows to be close to their loved ones. There is a man who has made a vibrator that can be filled with the ashes of the widow's loved ones. Apparently, he calls this one 21 grams, which is named after how much of a loved one's ashes the device can hold. This Dutch designer says his creation is for grief-stricken widows to revisit the intimate memories of a lost beloved one. The vibrator comes with a kit, has room for an iPhone so you can play music and flowers, and it says the key to this cabinet is a golden collier, and so the woman is the only one who can access the cabinet like anybody else would want to, and then the kit comes with a cologne and perfume container as well. So, the reason I'm bringing this up is because, as you, we've been talking about, the New World religion is going to be filled with all kinds of new, quote, sexuality, and this is all a part of that. Everybody and their, every woman, I should say, and now also men as well, everybody's supposed to have a vibrator, like that is what people just do these days, it's just normal. And Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now, they had this tweet up for only an hour, but of course it's splashed all over the internet now because they took it down. And it says, warning, and then there's a hashtag, NSFF, or I'm sorry, NSFW, not safe for workplace. And then it says, something hot and spicy is coming soon. And it shows a, a couple, a man and a woman, on a couch, the woman's wearing a sexy little dress, and the where the man's personal part should be, which they're both looking down at, is all bleeped out. So something hot and spicy is coming soon. Okay. Maybe it's a vibrator you had over there. Well, I think it was something more real than a vibrator, is that what they're in, in timid, uh, hinting toward. And then they took it down saying, we're sorry for our earlier tweet. We didn't mean to offend and removed it when we realized we'd made an error in judgment. I don't think really? so. Really? They got more exposure by doing that. Exposure? And, yes, literally. And then, of course, you may be aware that there are more and more of these videos out there about gay guys who touch vaginas for the first time. Oh, I saw that. And lesbians who touch a penis for mm -hmm, the first time. Mm -hmm. Now, if they had it with young people, old people, this person, the virgins, or that person, it would be, people would say, disgusting. But since it's this, it's funny. So, here we go with more of it. And then, somebody sent me this article on my Facebook page about, they're talking about how orgy is the new thing that's happening in the age of, they're calling it sex positivism. I guess because you can be whatever sex you want, have whatever kind of sex you want, and everything is all okay, because everything is okay now. So anyway, it was, when I was doing my research, I looked back um, before I move forward with this. In January of 2015, there was an article out called The Rise of the Middle Class Swingers about posh orgies, which is the hottest new trend as professional couples flock to VIP-style sex parties. So it talks about this time, um, there's a, apparently a documentary called Sex Party Secrets, 
And this um, fe was featured of a fellow named Chris Reynolds Gordon who runs a club called Heaven Circle. He says thousands of people apply to join, but there are only 90 members. Okay, that sounded kind of strange. And he talked about his parties at these 30 million pound London townhouses, and they had a human jigsaw room where guests pile on a giant bed and they all have sex together. So this was January 2015. Bump up now to April of 2016. Now there's, um, let's see, uh, now he's claiming that they have 20,000 members with parties taking place in London, Paris, New York, LA, Vegas, Ibiza, Berlin, Amsterdam, and Vienna, and they always sell out, and they're held in huge opulent places with 30 million pound million dollar houses, million pound million houses, they, says, they said. So it's interesting um, because I looked on Facebook and they only had 1,500 likes. So I thought, well, that's kind of odd. This place is called Heaven Circle. They show women dressed in um, uh, red lingerie and they wear long robes that are velvet with hoods and they're half covering their faces. So to me, it looks very much like sexual ritual. It says that Heaven Circle vets its guests. They have an operating tiering system with extra special parties for the sexual elite. A sex Olympics is currently being planned where the best performers from around the world will come together for a fantasy team orgy. They said that most parties are attended by swinging couples with a few single men and women thrown in. And again, they're referring to a sex positive age where dating and hookup app apps are popular, so embarrassment is fast eroding. And this gentleman says that 70 to 80 percent of our members use photos of their faces, and even in the workplace people say, yeah, I went to an orgy, and the response will be, ah, oh, that's cool, because it's not even taboo anymore. And now the company is going to teach you to have your own sex parties, or sex orgies, I guess is what they're calling them. And the founder says it's evolving in a very, very short period of time. I believe that in 20 years, this will be extremely normal. It's on a crest of a wave at the moment, and I'm just fortunate I got there first. <laughs> so this is what I've been telling you about the New World Religion. Mm. This, it's coming along. So with continuing flowing with what we've got going here um, on Saturday Night Live. Now remember, we've been talking to you a lot about bears. So I'm going to start with this story. On Saturday Night Live, they had a skit of Winnie the Pooh. And his cousin from far away, Denny the Real, shows up. And he talks about The Revenant, which is the movie I told you about, Leo DiCaprio, where people mm -hmm. claim he was raped by a bear. So they talk about that. And they also talk about Pooh's pantslessness, which I told you about, I think, in the last podcast, where that women used to wear many skirts, but now they're saying that they're pantsless. So all this was wrapped around this bear. Winnie the Pooh, Saturday Night Live. Now, keeping that in mind, Let's jump to the MTV Movie Awards. Now, if you haven't seen that, you know, you're missing out, I guess, because they did a big rap song called Leo, of course, referring to Leonardo DiCaprio and his movie, The Revenant. And this is the year that Leo got effed by a bear. So they dance and they sing and they gyrate and they carry on with each other. Now, if you also want to remember, not too long ago, I also reported about Miley Cyrus doing similar things with dancing bears around her. And also, if we want to continue to take this back a bit, we can talk about Theodore Roosevelt, who actually was the inventor of the teddy bear, so to speak, or it was named after him. So everybody has a teddy bear. And of course, Russia is the bear, which we're talking about. And we're also talking about going inside, hibernating, and perhaps shutting down. Maybe that's one another reason why they're using the bear. But anyway, I told you that bestiality is on going to be the next thing. And here we go. They're still dancing and singing about it. And Saturday Night Live is talking about it. And also on Saturday Night Live, or not Saturday Night Live, I'm sorry, the MTV Movie Awards, they also had Rebel Wilson and Adam Devine, who win, won an award for the best kiss. Now they come out and they start talking about how they have no sexual chemistry. And so the gentleman starts saying, I'm not turned on by her soft, pillowy lips. And she says, I'm not aroused by his tight little bubble butt. And he says, I'm not fully erect when I look into, and then starts going, kissing her, uh, and they th go down on the floor, they tumble, they twist, he's on top what of her. Is this? this is the MTV Movie Awards. You're kidding. Nope. I told you, and he's this very small man, and she's a larger woman. So, of course, again, you know, if it was something different, they're, they're 
taking and twisting your ideas of sexuality all around, and these are things now that are on basically mainstream TV. Things that used to be on pornography channels, people would look, you know, when nobody would read when nobody was looking. Uh, it is right in front of your face, and there's no way that you're going to get around it. So I thought that was disgusting as well, but it's out there, and you need to know it's out there so you don't get pulled into it. And then, of course, what's besides bestiality, some of the things that are called the last taboo is incest. So this was another lengthy article I was reading about a woman named Melissa, who's in her 20s, who met an older woman named Lisa. It was love at first sight. Now, the two have been in a relationship ever since, but they know marriage is out of the picture. Why? Not because they're lesbian, but because they are mother and daughter. So, now... Consensual incest exists in cases like Melissa's, who discovered Lisa was her biological mother, um, and they figured that out only after apparently they started dating. Oh, so they didn't know. They, they didn't know, know, know in the beginning, didn't. supposedly. Now then they're saying it wasn't in this article, it wasn't long ago in homosexuality, and get this, and sadoma sadomasochism were also considered taboo. So I guess sadomasochism is now okay. And then it goes on to talk about Hollywood's offerings are packed with homoerotic imagery. That's right, because that's how that they break down the barriers. It says, romantic love between family members is slowly becoming less socially outrageous. In fact, there is a growing demand in the adult industry for incest porn called Faucest. Faucest. It says, according to a, um, Dr. Chantel Tibbles, a sociologist and author of the book named Exposure, a sociologist explores sex, society, and adult entertainment. Quote, it would seem that lines around the incest taboo are shifting. Legalizing it would be too risky because it may incentivize it, says another psychologist who specializes in treating incest cases, Dr. Karen Meiselman. Then we go on to um, an assistant professor at the University of California in Santa Barbara, Deborah Lieberman, who has done extensive research on incest aversion, who says, quote, we need to start asking if it's okay to limit someone's freedom just because we have a yuck response to it, no, unquote. This is a moron. The German Ethics Council agrees. Last year, this independent body of experts called for an end to the criminalization of incest between siblings. And in France, apparently, consensual incest is still legal. Okay, France, everything goes. And Germany, again, I'm very disappointed in you. And there is a lawyer who defended an incestuous couple, a stepfather and stepdaughter in 2007, who says, quote, We were ahead of our time, but legalization will happen because such cases will become more common, unquote. So I am telling you that there will be no... Nothing sacred when it comes to sexuality anymore because it is all a part of New World well, religion. Isn't anyway, yeah. It's yes, but all the lines are being crossed, which I've been telling you for some time. And here we go. Now another person sent this in to me called um, the Overton Window, which I have talked to you about it frequency-wise. How first of all it's like shock and awe. Remember the Gulf campaign? They called it shock and awe. How they they shock you, which then opens the frequency and they put in whatever they want. But this person, Joseph P. Overton, who worked for the Mackinac Center for Public Policy, actually laid it out in steps. Now, I still think that this has been utilized for many, many years, but they're crediting this person. But it is a guide to legalize anything from cannibalism to pedophilia. And first of all, they start with the unthinkable, then they go to the radical, and they make it acceptable, then they say it's sensible, and then they say it's popular, and now it's policy, means that, meaning that they are actually legislating it, saying that this is why we can protect your rights. So anyway, I think that what we're seeing is exactly this, and it's not exactly news, but we are telling you what's happening. It is unfolding, and it is my opinion. It is more important than ever that you know who and what you are because they are going to tell you things that you are not. And people are buying into this, and they're doing it, and they think that's cool and all that. But, you know, it really, in my opinion, is taking you down a really wind, twisty, winding path from which the return is going to be very challenging for you. So I do want to remind you that in June, I am going to be taking my Clear Health and Healing Spiritual Tour up to the Cotian Alps in northern Italy, where we will be exploring Waldensian country. We will be on the, in the Cotian Alps, which are power peaks, power points, so you can find your own personal power. 
we will be experiencing the clear air, the clear water, the pure food. We will be doing a certain amount of hiking. Some people who are coming are not big on hiking for a variety of reasons. There are places where you can sit and you can contemplate and just absolutely enjoy the scenery. It's an amazing, amazing place. We're going to a water factory, we're going to a chocolate factory, we're going to see where the Waldensians walked. We are just, it's just going to be amazing everything that is going to be involved. So this tour will be closing very, very soon. If you are interested, you do need to get a hold of Patricia immediately, customer support at expansions.com, or go on the website where you can place your down payment. And in uh, May, this coming May, will be my last session of the Self Healing Group webinar, and we will be breaking for the summer for that. Stuart will be in Iceland and Holland in May, and in June he will be in Poland and Germany. And then in September, we will be having our week-long, brand-new September Spectacular. So that is also going to be fabulous. If you need a payment plan for that, now is the time, again, to get a hold of Patricia, get your payment plan going, because once you're here, we want you focused and concentrated on everything that we are going to give you. Anything else? I think that's about it. All right, so please like our Facebook fan pages. We appreciate that. Join our site um, as a member. And we appreciate everything that you can do to keep yourself safe because that adds to the whole group mind pattern. And trust me, as a human species, we need all the help we can get at this point in time and space. So see you again next week. Bye. Bye.